My name's Rasheen and I'm sick of reading. Welcome to my High Bear Nation uh, reading vlog. It is a reading vlog set up by Simon at Savage Reads, I think for his birthday. Uh, and I thought since I am stuck indoors anyway, I might as well join in um, and give you a tiny little reading vlog. The only thing is that I am not very well today. I went for a walk this morning, but I am now stuck in bed. So we'll see how this goes. But I'll begin with my TBR. I have been overly ambitious with this TBR. There is no way <laughs> that I'm going to read these books in two days, even if I am stuck in bed all day. I'm going to go for them a go anyway. So the prompts were to read a book by favourite author. And then also one of the bonus prompts was to read a book that's on the Women's Prize 2020 shortlist. As some of you may know, <laughs> I'm currently making my way through Hilary Mantel, The Mirror and the Light. In my last reading vlog, I think, which was the Cozy Reading Night reading vlog, did I start this then? Or did I finish Bring Up the Bodies then? One or the other. But I've read the Bring Up the Bodies this month and I'm also reading this one. I'm already like a third of the way through. I've still got two thirds of the way to go. Um, which, if you can tell, probably <laughs> means I've got about 12 hours of reading to go on this book alone. One of the other prompts was to read a book set in your favourite time period. And for that, I have gone for The Other Bennett Sister. Um, and the reason that I've picked this is partly because it's, it's one of my library books that I want to read. Um, but it's also because... I love Jane Austen. I find Jane Austen to be a very comforting read. And although I have heard that a lot of the Pride and Prejudice retellings aren't really worth it, from what I've heard, this one definitely is. And it's a good book um, to give you an entirely different perspective on a classic, you know. So I have picked this. But this is, again, another chunky book. The other prompts were to pick a book you've been saving for a rainy day. Um, and then there was a bonus prompt to pick a book with a bear on the cover or a bear in the title. And for that one, I have picked Catherine Randell's The Bear and the Nightingale. Editing Roisin popping in to say to you that I kept saying that um, The Bear and the Nightingale was written by Catherine Randell. Catherine Randell is a children's author. The Bear and the Nightingale is written by Catherine Odd. Slightly different. <laughs> which I have on Audible and it's one that I have been saving for a long time because um, I love, I studied Russian in school um, and so Russian history and Russian folklore was something we studied alongside the language um, and also because um, I love that kind of historical fiction with a little bit of magic folklore kind of woven into it. I think this might be slightly more on the fantasy end than I generally read but it's got a bear in the title so maybe I'll begin it now. Again I think that's a long one so I don't think I'm going to be going through it. And the final prompt was a short and sweet book and for that I have chosen the poetry collection by Wendy Cope, Two Cures for Love. Uh, Wendy Cope writes lovely gorgeous little um, very accessible poetry um, and so I'm going to try and read some of that as well. So what have I done this morning? This morning I've read one chapter of The Mirror and the Light and I've started to listen to the next chapter. The one that's available on script has a different narrator. <laughs> it's just I don't know I just don't like the way he's doing it as much which is really annoying because I thought I could listen to a lot of it. So Mirror in the Light is one of my books I'm reading for this readathon but I still have like 18 hours left of it so <laughs> I'm probably not going to finish many other books. Um, I've also decided to read a poetry collection though, Wendy Cope's Two Cures for Love so um, hopefully I can get through that. Uh, I'm feeling really tired today, really drained. I'm not really sure why but I am so nice day of cosy in bed <laughs> reading seems like the done thing. It's also the first day that it's not been really sunny since I went into isolation so we were gonna go for a long walk but it might rain. Right I've got up, I have done my hair, I've put clothes on, I'm accidentally dressed as Dorothy Gale for the day and we're gonna go out for a walk in a gale. Not quite a gale but it's really windy and it does not look nice out. So. <laughs> for a walk it was very nice but my my body was just not having it um it's not the virus if you're new here i have chronic illness uh, and i don't feel very well right now so i'm lying in bed listening to cromwell listening to the mirror and the light 
Um, and I might be here for the rest of the day, so it's going to be a fun vlog. I've been listening to the audiobook of The Mirror and the Light on script, and I really don't like the new narrator. He says Rodsley, even though the book says Call Me Risley. It's Risley, is how we're supposed to pronounce that. And someone else he pronounced wrong as well. Or, oh, he says Shapui rather than Japui, uh, which is only a tiny difference, but it, when I've listened to the audiobooks for the other two and they say Japui, and he says Shapui, then it just makes it sound different. It's kind of jarring in my head. I find it quite hard to listen to audiobooks and not do anything else. If I'm listening to an audiobook, I need to be doing something, and then I get distracted and I'm not really listening. Um, except if I just lie down, but then I fall asleep and I forget what's happened anyway. So, what do you do when you listen to audiobooks? Let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful. I am 337 pages into it now, which means I have like 550 pages left. Um, it's really long, but it is really beautifully written. Um, Hilary Mantel really does really well description, and I love the way she plays with memory. Like you're inside Thomas Cromwell's head, so sometimes he goes off on a tangent back into the past or into dreams and things, um, and it's really well done. And also, I can, you can see him now starting to get kind of above himself, kind of overreaching so i can see how he will get into trouble um and also producing friends that he once had through his behavior so it'll be interesting to to see how she um gets through to the point of his beheading <laughs> i'm having some trouble reading with my eyes at the moment i just my eyes keep doing a weird like not focusing thing so i'm gonna try and listen to the audiobook but i think i might end up napping it's half five which is kind of late for a nap but i think i need it i tried to have a nap and listen to the audiobook and now i just have a headache this is kind of a grumbly vlog i'm sorry <laughs> right ignore this spot situation i've just noticed i've got it and um it would have been on my face this whole time so just ignore that the cake that i just showed you um i made for my partner's birthday back in february um but he had so many cakes that we like sliced it up and put it in the freezer and i just had the last piece so that was really nice um so i'm gonna get back to reading more of hilary mantel um so there's so much in this book like it's currently we're at the pilgrimage of grace which is like the most serious uprising against the tudors so we haven't even got to the anne of cleves situation or like norfolk scheming against him in order to get catherine catherine howard on the throne so we've got a lot still to get through um there's a lot still to happen which makes sense because i'm not even halfway there. but um i'm enjoying it there's, and i'm feeling a bit better now so that's good hopefully tomorrow i'll be more like yay ready to go <laughs> Is Sunday um, and I'm feeling much better than I felt yesterday which is great it is quarter to ten in the morning which is feels like quarter to nine in the morning because the clocks went forward yesterday so um, we're now in British summertime officially and the Sun is thankfully complying with that and it is a very sunny day again which is great because it was so overcast yesterday that I think it um, added to my feeling of grumpiness. Hang on, I'm really high up. Today I am going to put some makeup on and then I'm going to film a video and then I'm going to do a lot of the chores that I meant to do yesterday. Um, I meant to like spread them out over these two days but because I was feeling like a bum yesterday, um, not like a homeless person, like an actual physical bottom. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry uh, and so I just felt like I needed to be in bed most of the day so today I've got a lot on my plate but thankfully I have got the rest of the mirror and the light audiobook I can listen to even though the narrator is annoying me and um, I've got the bear and the nightingale on audiobook as well I might listen to that more 
and actually read the physical copy of the mirror and the light because of how annoying I'm finding the narrator. Um, so you'll see a lot of tidying with me with headphones. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing. Ah, post makeup. <laughs> uh, I feel like I look much more alive now, although the sun's gone. So I was really thinking that the sun had decided to make an appearance again today and yesterday it was just a blip. But no, we've gone on growth, guys. Hello. <laughs> um, I am just going to edit my video that's going up today now. Um, so I've got my iPad for videoing, editing. I don't actually have a laptop. I sold it before we went travelling because I didn't need it for travelling. We took my lap, we took an iPad instead. Um, so I edit everything on my iPad. <laughs> which is exactly up my street and my boyfriend's just brought me lunch without telling me <laughs> without me asking him or saying I'm hungry just brought me up some lunch because it's lunchtime which is lovely so I'm just uploading my video now and while it's uploading I'm going to tidy this room and I'm going to listen to The Bear and The Nightingale by Catherine Rundell while I do it the only problem is because I'm filming on my phone because my camera died last month and I can't get it fixed now um, I can't listen and film at the same time because my phone doesn't let me and I don't have it audible on my iPad because I don't have space for it. I'm going to try and put some clips in, try and remember to put clips in, but I'm going to have to keep like stopping. So. We've just had a food delivery from my partner's sister, uh, so we've got lots of eggs. Yes. But there's no flour anywhere, so still no baking. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, a bit, I'm on my haunches, so I'm a bit awkward. Um, I'm going to do some planting now, plant some veggies. The sun has come out, so the promise of the morning has come to fruition. It wasn't cloudy all day, which is excellent. So I'm going to plant some veggies, and I'm going to listen to the audiobook. My partner got me these tiny little gardening tools. All of our little seed trays. We have beetroot, runner beans, squash, chilies, and French beans. We didn't go to the shop to get them. My partner's mum gave us ones that she had hanging around, um, so they're not exactly what I would have chosen if I was choosing my own seeds to grow, but it's nice to have something to grow. I am a complete mess now, so I'm gonna have to go wash myself up, but it was a nice productive day. Obviously they're in the conservatory now because it's still like frosty, so they would, um, they could die outside. So I'm putting them in here for now until they sprout and then we're gonna hopefully build a raised bed outside and then we can put them in, so that should be fun. I just did a workout and some yoga, so that is why I look a little worse for wear. Um, and I'm going to make some dinner. This is why I don't work out with makeup on. I'm gonna make dinner now and then I'm gonna try and read The Mirror and the Light for the rest of the evening because I haven't read any of it today. <laughs> Made a creamy mushroomy pasta for dinner. And I've just got out of the bath and I threw my hair up in a bun for the bath and for some reason whenever I throw my hair up in a bun for a bath and I'm not looking at it it looks great I like it I like the way it looks but when I try and do a bun it looks awful does that happen to anyone else <laughs> this is the only book that I'm reading basically for this readathon um even though 
I said there were four books I was going to try and read. This book is too big <laughs> and I have not been concentrating well enough to get through it and other books as well. But I'm going to persevere and see how far I can get through this book before the end of the night. It's nine o'clock, so bedtime in about two hours. See how much I can read in two hours. Hello. Um, so it is ten o'clock at night. I'm halfway through the mirror in the night now, officially. Um, no, just beyond halfway. And I am currently dealing with horrific stomach cramps. Not period pains, like <laughs> chronic illness stomach cramps. I know some people have horrible period pains, but if you have standard period pains, these are worse than that. So they make it quite hard to concentrate on anything that intensely as reading. I could maybe listen to an audiobook. I think I'm going to listen to the Bear and the Nightingale audiobook again for a bit. Because I just can't. I can't focus. It hurts. Hello. So I'm now wrapping up my hibernation reading vlog. Um, and as I knew when I told you my DBR, I was overly ambitious. Um, honestly, I hadn't planned for this readathon at all because I didn't hear about it until like a few days before it actually started. And when I heard about it, I thought I would have got further through the mirror and the light before it actually began. So I thought I would be just finishing off the mirror and the light and I would have like maybe 200 300 pages so i could spend one day doing that and then could do other things in another day or would even have time to read poetry and finish this on one day however that was not what happened and i was only about a third of the way through the mirror in the night when it came to the beginning of the hibernation now i am just over halfway so <laughs> i mean i didn't that means i didn't read that many pages in the past two days um things got out of hand they got away from me uh, but as i saw from Simon at Savage Reads, they got away from him too, so I don't feel too badly about it. I didn't know when I made my plans that the Saturday I would um, go for a walk and completely tire myself out and have to spend the rest of the day in bed, and I didn't know that on Sunday I would be experiencing such bad stomach cramps I couldn't concentrate on reading. So um, I actually feel quite proud of the fact that I have managed to take a significant chunk out of The Mirror and the Light and begin um, The Bear and the Nightingale. I, so far, I, I'm loving The Mirror and the Light. I adore it. If you've read Wolf Hall or Bring Up the Bodies, it's perfect. She hasn't let herself down at all. If anything, it's e even better than I was expecting. The, the other thing that I, it does surprise me, though, is that I'm more than halfway through and Jane Seymour's still alive. So <laughs> there's still loads of, like, plot to go between now and Thomas Cromwell's death. I don't really think you can call spoilers on Tudor history. So I also started The Bear and the Nightingale. It's a book that I've been meaning to start for ages. And again, I'm really enjoying it. It's very folksy, folktale. Um, I do kind of wish I'd begun it in midwinter because it is such a atmospherically wintry book. But it is a trilogy. So if I love this one, maybe by winter I can read the other two. Uh, so that is my wrap up. Um, I'm sorry if this vlog is really disjointed because I didn't like finish any books or do that much reading but it's been a very cozy weekend anyway um and thank you for watching and i will see you the day after tomorrow bye bye